Hello and welcome to the final day of the Small Business and Nonprofit Conference. Today's sessions are virtual and we're wrapping up with an amazing prize, a $500 Amazon gift card sponsored by our vendor EBSCO. There's no need to grab tickets today, though over the past two days in person, we have enjoyed some of the origami some of you have done, but your presence in each Zoom session automatically enters you into the drawing. The more sessions you attend, the more chances you have to win, the winner will be announced on Monday, so keep an eye on your inbox. Good luck and enjoy the sessions. I am Eleanor Chatterton. I'm a librarian at the St. Louis Public Library. Thank you for joining us for a presentation by Tom Diver of SCORE on SBA Services Overview. This session will be recorded and posted to the St. Louis County Library's YouTube channel shortly. Uh, we're going to run through the program, and if you have questions during it, please put them in the chat, and after the presentation, we'll have some Q&A. All right. Tom Diver is the Lead Lender Relations Specialist with the St. Louis District Office of the U.S. Small Business Administration. Tom serves as a senior member of the district office team and is primarily responsible for marketing all SBA lending programs and services, conducting outreach, training and recruitment with all of the lenders in the district, and working with the lenders that need assistance on complex transactions, those who are new to SBA lending, those who are growing their loan volume and diversifying into the use of additional SBA loan programs and services. Prior to joining the SBA in 2012, Tom worked in the banking industry for 28 years, where he gained valuable banking experience serving in a number of roles, including senior lender, chief risk officer, chief financial officer, president, and chief executive officer for several St. Louis area banks. Welcome, Tom. Thank you very much, Eleanor. I appreciate the introduction and welcome everyone. Thank you for joining and your interest in this program. Uh, especially shout out for joining us on such a beautiful Friday afternoon. So kudos to you, and I hope that you'll find this information uh, useful. Uh, I've got some slides I'll go through and kind of give you an overview of what uh, services and uh, products the SBA can offer and to help your business with, and then we'll have plenty of time at the end for questions and further discussion. So let's go ahead and dive right in. So what is the SBA? Uh, we're actually part of the federal government. So we are an agency of the federal government. Our administrator sits on President Biden's cabinet. Uh, and so we have a, a voice for small businesses for small business and represent you in the federal government. Uh, we're also a go-to resource for small businesses. Uh, we help small business owners uh, get access to capital. Uh, we provide resources for helping businesses gain the know-how uh, and uh, the experience they need to run their business successfully. Uh, and the SBA has offices throughout uh, the United States and our territories. Uh, there's actually 68 offices around uh, the country. I work in the St. Louis District Office and we cover the uh, Eastern half of Missouri. Uh, Missouri is fortunate enough to have two SBA offices since we have two federal uh, uh, reserve districts in Kansas City and St. Louis, we have two offices. So we split the state are able to concentrate on uh, our halves of the state. So there are uh, four primary areas uh, that SBA uh, is able to help small businesses. Uh, the first is access to capital, uh, or if you will, our loan programs. Uh, that's what I spend most of my time on and what we're mostly uh, known for, uh, but we do offer other uh, services uh, we'll talk about the free business counseling that's available uh, through our resource partners. Uh, and then SBA also provides uh, disaster loans. And obviously our hearts go out to the, the folks in the Southeast right now dealing with uh, the remnants of Hurricane Helene. But uh, we have folks on the ground with FEMA and other federal government uh, folks to try to help those folks recover. And uh, we do provide in disaster situations, uh, loans, not only for businesses, but also for homeowners and renters to recover from disasters. And uh, there is actually a disaster that impacts our area right now, impacts St. Louis uh, City and County from the uh, disaster that was declared in Illinois earlier this summer on the flooding. Uh, and then also government contracting. We Our office assists with 
businesses that want to expand and grow their revenue stream by doing business with the federal government. And we'll talk about uh, that as well. So I'll start with the resource partner network. Uh, these are uh, partners that we have vetted and worked with over years and decades, uh, and they provide the free mentoring and counseling for our uh, small business partners. Uh, they're there's over 1,400 offices around the nation. Uh, in our area, we have the Small Business Development Center. Uh, they are a part of the University of Missouri Extension Services. Uh, those counselors are have their master's degrees and also have been business owners themselves. Uh, we have the SCORE organization, uh, which is the acronym for Senior Corps Retired Executives. Uh, but, uh, there actually are folks who are not actually retired and uh, members of the SCORE group now. It's a nonprofit organization, uh, and those folks uh, provide free mentoring and counseling. Uh, there's approximately 100 volunteers in the St. Louis uh, district office area, and when you contact uh, their office, they try to match you with uh, individuals who are either in your line of business, familiar with the line of business, uh, and can meet your needs. And uh, if you don't, if you find a mentor that uh, you don't connect with, uh, they're very happy to to offer uh, to switch you with someone who makes that connection. So you want to find somebody who you're comfortable with talking and providing you uh, the information and services that you need. It will be fine. It will uh, make you, it will be helpful for you. There's also a women's business center, which we're very fortunate to have. Uh, one in the St. Louis area and one in the Columbia area. Uh, they specialize in helping women-owned businesses, but they're open to to uh, both men and women as well. And then we have the Veterans Business uh, Center as well, and they are based in St. Louis as well. So those are our four primary resource partners. As I mentioned there, most of their services are free because SBA provides them with part of their funding. And then they will sit down, they offer many programs as well as um, providing one-on-one -on -one assistance, whether you're starting out a business, need help with your business plan, or a veteran business has been around for a long time and just wanna have a second set of eyes look at your operation and maybe provide you some suggestions on how you can operate or maybe even address some issues that you're uh, finding. If you go to our website, sba.gov, you can look under local assistance, you can find our St. Louis office. Uh, not only will you have a map and contact uh, for all those resource partners, uh, but you also can sign up for our newsletter from our office and we send that out weekly. It has a list of all, not only our SBA uh, programs and trainings and workshops that we offer, but also we include a list of the programs that are offered in throughout our 54 county area uh, by our resource partners as well. So again, go to sba.gov and you can migrate through a local assistance who will have a, a slide where you can find your district office. You can find the St. Louis office and sign up for that. I don't know if we have anyone joining us from the Illinois side of the river as well. Uh, we don't. Uh, our office serves Missouri, but there is an office in uh, Chicago, a district office in Chicago covers the entire state of Illinois, as well as a field office they have in Springfield uh, that provides assistance as well. But you can find all that information again on our sba.gov website. So before we dive into more of the loan program, I wanted to talk a little bit more about uh, federal contracting. Um, from a federal standpoint, the federal government is the world's largest customer of buyers of goods and services. Um, and as a requirement, uh, the federal government must buy 25% of our of all goods and services from small businesses. So uh, the federal government is always looking for small businesses that provide uh, services. And you might say, well, what do I offer? What do I, what could I offer for the federal government? And uh, the government is just like any uh, other large business or consumer buying almost all kinds of products and services. We have federal buildings, we need landscaping. Uh, we have, as an example, a contract for Fort Lennonwood to provide for a restaurant to provide food for folks, for the troops when they go out overnight on training exercises uh, to bring food in for them uh, while they're training. So a wide variety of, of that. 
Um, you can look at sba.gov again for contracting. Uh, we also have a, a gentleman in our office, Gary Alexander is his name, and he deals with, he's a business opportunity specialist, and he deals with uh, government contracting. Uh, and that's his job to try to help folks who uh, are looking to do business with the government. And we can also assist not only with federal government, but obviously state and local governments also are buying goods and services as well. Uh, one of our resource partners I didn't mention is the Apex Accelerators. Uh, they are a part of the state of Missouri, uh, but those individuals actually, they can team with Gary and they can help individuals get access to federal contracting. Uh, you can sign up for, it's called a System of Award Management System, SAM is the acronym. Uh, and on that, you can actually register your business and then you can actually sign up to receive uh, any notice of any contract that the government is putting out looking for goods and services in your field or in your uh, particular geographic area uh, where you like to uh, provide goods and services. So let's dive a little bit more into the, the SBA loan programs. Uh, a recap, uh, going back four plus years ago, I used to say that the government uh, didn't make a lot of direct lendings other than in the disaster situation uh, well, COVID changed that because all businesses were impacted uh, by uh, COVID. And so uh, the federal government and the SBA declared an economic injury disaster uh, for businesses that were uh, impacted by COVID. And just some statistics, uh, you may, this is a very small, so I'm not able to, able to see this, but basically just in the state of Missouri, there were 44,000 uh, COVID economic injury disaster loans made for $3.8 billion. Uh, there's also advances made. Now, the, the EIDL, or disaster loans, are were loans, so those are being repaid, and those were 30-year loans at 3.75%. The advances that were made, and you see, if you can read the screen, over $300 million of advances. Uh, terminology is a little bit confusing, but an advance under that program was a grant, basically did not have to be repaid, so over $300 million were dispersed as in the state of Missouri uh, for folks that were impacted by COVID. Uh, SBA also uh, administered the Shuttered Venue Operator Grant, uh, which was for theaters and uh, other uh, performance-based businesses that were impacted. As you remember, they were all uh, shut down. There were $231 million in grants issued to Missouri operators. The Restaurant Revitalization Fund uh, were 284 million dollars dispersed within the state of Missouri to help restaurants. Uh, the Paycheck Protection Program, uh, which was over $13 billion just in the state of Missouri, 237,000 loans made. And those were forgivable loans. Uh, so if the business used those for uh, their business, for payroll to keep people employed and to keep their business going through uh, COVID, uh, that money was forgiven. And maybe some of you on the line were able to participate in some of those programs. And the debt relief as well as during during COVID, SBA actually made payments for folks who had other SBA loans. Uh, as I mentioned, the COVID loans were a fixed rate at 3.75%, up to $2 million. And they do not count toward the other $5 million that's available through the general SBA business programs, which we'll talk about. Uh, if you happen to have a COVID EIDL loan, uh, SBA set up a, a separate service center in Fort Worth just to handle those loans. As you can imagine, there's billions of dollars that will be out there for 30 years, so we had to have folks uh, on board to, to uh, handle that, and their email address to connect with them is at COVID EIDL servicing at sba.gov. As I want to reference, these slides will be available for anybody who wants them after the call. Um, EIDL loans are assumable. Uh, with SBA consent. So if someone wants to sell their business, uh, the person buying that loan can go in and, and assume that 30-year loan. Um, there were UCC filings made against uh, the business assets of those businesses, uh, but SBA can uh, subordinate the SBA lien uh, to another lender if your business needs additional funding. Um, and we have run into some instances where some folks had their IDs stolen. Um, and if uh, that was done, someone may, may stole some ideas and got some loans in uh, 
the victim's name. Uh, if you do get a notice like that, you do want to follow up and follow the instructions on uh, the notice uh, to get that out off of your record. Um, we've had some folks that have called us that thought it was a scam, that they didn't take out the loan, so they just ignored that. Well, uh, you don't want to do that because eventually what will happen is that uh, that loan will get referred to the U.S. Treasury uh, and the IRS will start offsetting dollars to those victims. So we don't want that to happen. So you do want to follow the procedures. Um, and again, you can go to sb.gov and there's information there on how to do that process. Okay, let's talk a little bit more about uh, the small SBA business loan program. And those loans are available for multiple purposes. And we'll talk about what you can use those for. Uh, the real benefits of the SBA program are you're able to get competitive terms. Uh, we, uh, under the 7A program, which we'll talk about is we don't set the rate, we let you negotiate that with your lender, but we set a maximum that they can charge. Um, and we, the lenders will usually work with you on allowing you to have uh, lower down payments, uh, so you maintain more equity for your business. Um, and then there's more flexible uh, terms as far as how you can operate with your business. And, and again, and the money to re retain and not putting down as much equity. Most conventional lending is going to need 15 25% down with the SBA. Um, you can generally going to need to put 10% into it. But uh, as you, if you're an established business and have uh, good equity in your business as possible, yet you can do 100% loan and still get the SBA guarantee. So the general program is the 7A program. Um, and if any to heard me speak before, the government's not real creative, may wonder where 7A came from. That's actually from the Small Business Act of 1953. Uh, and paragraph 7A uh, of that act gave SBA the authority to provide guarantees on, on uh, those loans for small businesses. Uh, a subset of the 7A program is the Community Advantage uh, Loan Program. Uh, there is one community advantage lender, which is also our micro lender, uh, then it's Justin Peterson organization uh, based in uh, St. Louis. Um, so the community advantage program is a uh, part of the su subset of the 7A program where they uh, have to make 60% of the loans to businesses that are in uh, areas that have uh, social economic uh, challenges. And the microloan program, again, with Justine Peterson, is a program where SBA will make uh, loans, a larger loan to them, and then they will turn around and make micro or small loans, can be as small as $500 and as large as $50,000 uh, to businesses. Uh, and the advantage of the microloan program is uh, Justine Peterson is very good at providing additional service and counseling, and, and they really focus on providing uh, loans to businesses that maybe aren't able to get conventional financing. Uh, and for example, if if someone's had a hiccup on their credit and the bank doesn't want or a lender doesn't want to make the loan to them, uh, in conjunction with the microloan program, uh, Justine Pearson also provides technical assistance and our counseling uh, and credit building really is what, is what they refer to as to help someone rebuild their credit so they can become uh, uh, more uh, bank qualified for conventional financing. Uh, the 504 program is for real estate primarily. Um, that's a little bit different than the 7A program, but we'll go into a little bit more detail here on, on the following slides on that. So uh, what can a loan, SBA-backed loan, uh, be used for? It can be used to start your business, grow your business, uh, repair uh, business to get it back up and going. Uh, you can buy a business with an SBA loan. Uh, you can establish a line of credit for your day-to-day -day expenses. As I mentioned earlier, the loans can be as up to $5 million. Uh, you can purchase, uh, renovate, or expand uh, your real estate. Uh, you can buy inventory, equipment, machinery. Uh, you can buy land or real estate. Uh, you can also use the proceeds to export a product to expand your, your business. So the standard 7A program, uh, it's loans that are made by our lending partners. Uh, and then they apply to the SBA for the federal guarantee. Uh, most lenders, most banks in the area are part of the SBA program, and a number of credit unions are as well. Um, you can find uh, a list of active lenders on our website. Uh, I always get, I usually get questions about who should I go to for a loan, and um, that's really up to 
uh, you as a business owner, if you have a relationship with uh, a lender, a bank, or a credit union already, that's always a good place to start uh, to visit, you know to work with them. But you can go, and if you don't find someone who's giving you terms that you want, you're uh, able to go to uh, multiple lenders to talk to them about what they will offer. Because as I mentioned earlier, they set the rates to negotiate between uh, the business and the lender with SBA only setting the maximum amount. So you can negotiate a uh, different SBA loan at one, back, SBA back loan at one institution uh, will have different terms than, than what a different uh, lender will offer, just like a conventional well, uh, program would work. There are maximum maturities. So if you're getting a loan for paying your operating expenses, the maximum maturity on that loan would be seven years. Um, for equipment, it could be 10 years, depending upon the working life of the equipment. And if you're buying 50 uh, real estate, you know, at least 20, 51% of the loan is going toward that building or other real estate, then the entire loan can be amortized over 25 years. So again, as I mentioned earlier, that helps lower your monthly payments uh, and allow you to maintain more capital and cash flow for the day-to-day -day operations of your business. Um, there are minimum credit underwriting standards uh, for loans of $500,000 or less, which basically means that SBA uses a credit scoring model for faster turnaround. So um, we basically run those through uh, credit, uh, uh, as credit score a model. Um, and for small businesses, a big chunk of that depends upon your uh, individual credit score because uh, a lot of, a lot of the there's not a lot of data available for really small businesses uh, that we can pull. So your personal credit score does have an impact on uh, your ability to get that uh, get that SBA loan. And as I mentioned earlier, if uh, you don't if you don't credit score, there's still a possibility to get the loan. We work with a lender uh, to detail mitigating circumstances. For example, maybe. Uh, if you had a medical problem a few years ago and got behind on a few bills and it's still impacting your credit score, that does not automatically disqualify you. We don't have a minimum credit score. Uh, we do run the, the credit score and the, go through the model. It's a faster turnaround. But if you don't credit score, it's still possible to get the guarantee. You just have to go through uh, explanation of, of kind of where you are and be able to demonstrate that, yes, I've got my business back on track and I'll be able to repay the loan. I mean, that's the ultimate uh, goal for not only the business, but also for the lenders is to have the loan, have the loan repaid. And SBA gives a lot of latitude to the lenders and, and how they underwrite the loan. And we ask them largely to follow the same prudent banking standards that they follow for their non-SBA loans or conventional loans. So we give them some flexibility uh, to underwrite, underwrite those loans. Uh, as I mentioned, the main, the main thing you're looking for is can the business demonstrate the ability to repay that. Uh, most lenders are going to uh, want to know basically how much money are you looking for, how are you going to use it, and then how are you going to repay it. And I recommend that um, you have uh, those laid out in some type of format. If you have a business plan, it doesn't have to be, you know, I've seen some that are 80 pages, and I've seen some that are uh, that are very concise and only a couple pages. And so it's not a matter of length, it's more the quality that's in there. And so an executive summary is often very, very acceptable. And our resource partners are very good at sitting down and working with you. I mean, it's really your business plan and there's templates on our website that you can use to start that if you haven't don't have a business plan. Uh, but it's a useful tool for you to kind of set out your goals as far as what I'm trying to accomplish and, and revisiting that every year or so to, uh, see if you're still on track and to uh, monitor that. But our resource partners are all very good at sitting down and and uh, helping you uh, put that plan together, asking you questions maybe you hadn't thought of, and preparing you so that when you go down and sit with a lender to ask for uh, money for them to uh, provide you with a loan, that you've already anticipated their questions and have a business plan that's going to address uh, their their concerns and give them the answers to the questions before they even ask. The 504 program, as I mentioned, is primarily for real estate, although it can be used for large pieces of equipment. And the 504 program, the way that works is the lender makes a loan uh, with a first lien on the property. And then SBA, through our certified development company partners, will make a take a second loan on that property uh, in a second position, and those loans are at a long, the SBA's uh, 
position loan is at a long-term fixed rate. And right now that's roughly in the six and a quarter percent range. Uh, so I'd be locked up at six and a quarter, say for 25 years. Uh, three or four years ago, that rate was got as low as two and three quarters percent. Obviously we've gone through a rising rate environment here in the last uh, year or so. So the rates have uh, increased, but uh, 6% locked in for 25 years is historically a still a very attractive rate. So the way the 504 loan program works then is the lender provides a loan for 50%, the SBA does a, a loan for 40%, and then the business is asked to bring uh, and to use 10% equity into that transaction. And also refinancing with this existing debt that's in place uh, can qualify for a 504 loan. So you have a, if you have a loan on your real estate and want to refinance it, uh, you can roll that into uh, a 504, 504 loan. Uh, touch on the loan fee program. Uh, the, the way our SBA program works is we're a zero subsidy, which means the taxpayers don't pay uh, for the loans. We collect a loan fee from the businesses that take out the loans and then that those loan fees basically cover the losses for the businesses that don't repay the loans. Uh, and we've been very fortunate over the last few years that our losses have been very low. So uh, right now there is a way a fee waiver for uh, we just started fiscal year 2025. Uh, the government runs on a September 30th year end. So we're four days into our new our new um, fiscal year. Uh, so through September of 2025, SBA is not charging any uh, fee for loans up to $1 million. So there's no guarantee fee for those. If it's over a million dollars, it varies depending upon the uh, amount of the loan. And so that origination fee is a fee that's paid by the borrower, but it can be included in, in the loan amount. So um, and if you're paying a say a 3% fee and you're spreading it out over 25 years, you're really only adding one eighth of 1% to your to your uh, balance or your interest rate over that period if it's added into the mounted loan. Uh, there is an annual servicing fee and that is paid by the lender. Uh, and that basically covers the administration of that, of that loan. And that's uh, basically 55 basis points or a little over one half of 1%. On the 504 loan program, there's no, again, there's no there's no upfront SBA guarantee fee. SBA is waiving our fee for those 504 loans. Um, and there is an annual servicing fee on that of a little over one third of 1%. Uh, that is added to the, the amount of the loan included in the interest rate that would be paid on the 504 loan. Some things that SBA has done recently to try to uh, improve uh, and make our SBA loan programs uh, more available. Uh, it used to be that we would check and do a, a criminal background check if someone had a fill out a form and if they had a prior uh, issue, uh, if they had a DUI or other uh, issue, then we would have to send your application to the FBI and they do a background check and fingerprinting. Uh, we have eliminated that, that step now. So um, we rely upon our lending partners to make a determination if uh, the borrower individual is of good character and someone that's that's in, uh, able to get the loan. Uh, on our app, there is one form that we have the uh, business owner fill out with the uh, borrower, and most of that is demographic information and general information on the size of the loan and how much you're going to use it for. Uh, but there is a one character question on that, and basically it's uh, basically have, uh, is the the borrower or applicant in in prison. Uh, if obviously, if you're in prison, you're not able to run your business. But uh, if you're used to be, if you're on parole or probation, you are prohibited from getting a loan. That's been removed. So applicants who are on probation are on parole are eligible for an SBA guaranteed loan. Um, loan uh, loans now are able to be used to not only buy completely buy a business, but it can also do a partial uh, purchase of a business with an SBA guaranteed loan. So that comes in handy, for example, if maybe a, a business owner wants to help a employee become a part owner in the business. And so an SBA guaranteed loan not can be used for that purpose. Um, because we are a federal government, we do rely upon 
uh, information that's reported on income tax returns to verify that there is income and cash flow available to repay the loan. Um, but we have provided flexibility now where um, instead of getting transcripts from the IRS with the lender for loans up to $500,000 can just use copies of the borrower's tax returns. Uh, SBA used to have a requirement that uh, life insurance was required on SBA guaranteed loans. Uh, we now allow lenders to use their own internal policy of whether they want to require that um, in cases where the business and the business uh, owners have a succession plan and other folks who can run the business. Uh, you know, then generally life insurance may not be required. Uh, if you have a sole proprietor and uh, you're the only one that's running the business and if something happened to you, the business would would uh, not be able to move forward then. In that case, if the loan, especially if the loan is not fully secured, um, then it's possible that life insurance would be encouraged at least to cover part of the, the loan amount. Uh, for loans of $50,000 or less, uh, SBA does not require collateral. Uh, the lender is not required to take it. They may still ask for collateral, but uh, from the SBA standpoint, uh, you can do a $50,000 SBA guaranteed loan and not have collateral. Um, we do not, we, SBA does not deny guarantee for lack of collateral. In fact, that's one of the reasons why uh, many times we'll do the SBA guarantees because a lender isn't comfortable. There's not enough collateral to pledge. Uh, for example, if you're buying a business, uh, you're paying maybe paying for uh, goodwill, intangible assets, customer uh, lists, um, those kind of things that aren't really good uh, from a uh, lender standpoint as far as collateral that they can, that they can monetize if the loan goes bad. So uh, they will come to us for a guarantee to help, to help in those situations. Uh, the money, the loan proceeds that are going in, whatever assets you buy with that, we, are, we, we do require that those assets real estate, equipment, inventory, whatever you're using to buy the proceeds with, you, mu you must provide a lien on those assets. Uh, but if, as I mentioned earlier, if you're in a situation where you don't have enough collateral to secure the loan, uh, we do not deny that. If you can still demonstrate um, that you have the experience to run the business and you're able to generate cash flow to repay the loan. And that's one of the reasons, again, as I mentioned, that SBA uh, guarantees use a lot of situations because most lenders will want to have their loan not only fully, fully uh, secured with one to one dollars, but most times they want to have more than that. So if you're taking out a hundred thousand dollar loan, they want to have one hundred twenty thousand dollars worth of collateral because they want to factor in the collection costs of what it would take to uh, get the loan uh, converted and repaid. I won't go into uh, great detail on this, but uh, we made it easier. Uh, it used to be that uh, affiliation, uh, there was a long, uh, longer test that lenders had to put together. Uh, and the purpose of the affiliation test is to, because we have a $5 million limit, if you have someone who owns more than one business, we have to look add those together to make sure you're not over uh, the size standard. And the size standard for SBA is, um, uh, businesses can have six and a half million dollars in income and over 15 million dollars in net worth so very large parameters so anybody below those numbers 15 million in equity and six and a half million in income would be considered small from that standpoint it would qualify obviously we're a small business administration so we do loans for small businesses but that's a pretty high threshold for and 99 percent of the businesses that i work with or run into are under those parameters so that's why affiliation is important, and the, the very the measure of that is if you if you own more than fifty percent of two different businesses, and then we have to put those two businesses together to determine if you meet the size standard. Um, SBA also made it very easy to much easier to get a a uh, SBA guaranteed loan if you're a franchise. Um, we do, won't longer publish the franchise directory. It used to be we we would review all the information that. Uh, a franchisee would sign with the franchisor. Uh, we now delegate that to the uh, lender to look, make that determination. Uh, the reason we looked at that was we wanted to make sure that uh, we were dealing with a small business and not dealing with a uh, basically a uh, office satellite office of a, a much larger operation. So we do a lot of guaranteed loans for franchises. That's a good way. Uh, one good way of starting a business if you're not because you have basically uh, a model and support from the 
franchise or uh, to run uh, a franchise within their operation. So we do do a lot of loan guarantees for franchise businesses. As I mentioned earlier, about a third of the loans that we guarantee in our area are for startup businesses. Uh, there is one uh, caveat there that if you have a change of ownership within the first 12 months, uh, you, you do need to get SBA's consent. And the reason that was put in place is uh, anyone taking on an SBA back loan will personally guarantee, has to personally guarantee that uh, if you're a 20% owner or more. So any 20% or more owner uh, of the business does have to personally guarantee the SBA loan. And what we saw a few people doing was they reported that they were had less than 10%. And then as soon as the loan closed, the next day they come in and, and it actually all of a sudden become a 25 or 30 or 50% owner. So uh, we had to put in a rule that uh, we're not designing that to prevent you from, from selling your business if you decide you want to get out of it. But we just... We're not going to let someone step into the business without personally guarantee it that really was trying to circumvent the rule. And uh, we talked about the franchises and a partial acquisition, and then as well, uh, SBA loans, just like the disaster loans, uh, SBA loan can be assumed, uh, but obviously SBA does need to give consent to that because we want to make sure that the buyer is as strong as the seller and still have the ability to repay the loan. A few things that are <clears throat> eligibility measurements. Uh, because we have limited dollars to guarantee, because we are using taxpayer dollars, we do ask the lender to represent to us that they will not make the loan without the SBA's guarantee. So um, when you get an SBA loan, the loan is fully amortized. So I mentioned earlier, if you're buying real estate, you get a 25-year amortization. Most lenders will only do three or five year balloons and then they have to renegotiate. With an SBA loan guarantee, you have a 25 year loan. That does not mean the loan rate is guaranteed, the interest rate is guaranteed for 25 years. A lender, I mean, they could lock, the lender can uh, lock that in if that's what you negotiate, but most times the lender will, will uh, do the loan and, and maybe adjust the loan rate every uh, five years, or it could be a floating rate where it adjusts every month. That's, that's fine. But, um, but generally, the most lenders will do a 25-year, 25-year uh, loan, and that's part of the SBA program. Is they have to do a fully amortized term note. So if you get a 10-year amortization, uh, you buy a piece of equipment, the loan has to be a 10-year note. So you don't have to worry about the loan being called or ballooned. Uh, borrowers are not eligible for an SBA uh, guarantee if they've had a previous loss on a federal uh, loan. So. If you had a, a VA loan or a car SBA loan or a student loan and, and the government had a loss on your loan, uh, you're not able to get an SBA guaranteed loan unless that loss is made, unless the government's made whole on that loan. And also, we can't do loans for people who have been debarred from doing business from the government if there's been some type of problem with that. I mentioned earlier for... Uh, who to get a loan from, it's always good if you've got a relationship with a lender or lenders to talk to them first. Uh, but SBA also has a lender match uh, program. Uh, so again, you go to our website, sba.gov, and uh, you'll see the lender match on there. You can just enter, <clears throat> if you're not on our website, you can just put into your search engine, uh, SBA lender match, and it will, pull, it will link, it'll link you to our website, sba.gov. And what this site does is it allows you to put out information. You fill out a brief questionnaire, uh, who you are uh, and what you're looking for, size of loan, kind of business, we'll ask questions about your revenue and income. And what happens then is that is put out uh, within uh, the, the SBA network. We have hundreds and thousands really of lenders who are looking to do SBA loans. And then what happens is... <clears throat> Most lenders will reply that are interested. Yes, I want to do a loan to a business in. They can do it by geographic area or by industry or any combination. And then we provide you with a list of those lenders who said, yes, we'd be interested. And then you decide on who you want to reach out to. So you can enter that information. Uh, you won't be bombarded by, by uh, folks because we won't share your contact information with them. <clears throat> we allow, we give your, their, the lender information to you and then you contact them. 
And then that, that's another way for you to make a contact with someone who's maybe interested in doing an SBA guaranteed loan if you're having trouble finding someone who's uh, willing to work with you. <clears throat> Excuse me. We also do a charity bond guarantee program. So if you're in the contracting business um, for uh, construction, as an example, you're always going to have to put up bonds uh, to ensure your work. Uh, SBA has insurance companies who provide uh, bonding. So much like uh, the loan program, uh, we have a list of insurance companies who provide bonds. Um, and with the SBA guarantee, it allows you to maintain more of your working capital for your business and for completing that contract. So you go into a lender and want to uh, do a bond or a letter of credit, they'll do that, but they'll want a CD as collateral or at least to block down part of your line of credit so that you basically reduce your line of credit, which is obviously counterproductive. If you're trying to do a contract, you need more more uh, more operating capital than instead of less. So uh, we do have a loan uh, bond program where uh, SBA will provide a guarantee on the bond uh, to help you get bonded for your projects. There's a little bit more detail about how that, uh, how that works. <clears throat> Provides the customer guarantee the work will be completed. Uh, many contracts will require those bonds, um, and uh, SBA our number many numbers are a little bit outdated. But we did 286 bonds for 168 million dollars a couple of years ago, and uh, the and that number for the last couple of years has actually gone up. So we're providing a lot of additional assistance for businesses through bonding program. I want to talk a little bit about uh, I mentioned the ex exporting pro program. <clears throat> how we support that is a good way to help small businesses uh, grow and expand. 96% uh, of consumers live outside the United States, uh, which is two thirds of the world's purchasing power. Um, and SBA has uh, programs to help you understand and work with uh, ability to expand and export. If you have something you want to offer, you can think and go global. I mentioned earlier, one of our, Resource partners of the Small Business Development Centers. They specialize in helping folks uh, with exporting. Uh, there's also U.S. Export Assistance Centers that are available as well through the uh, U.S. Commerce Department. Uh, there aren't a lot of grants available uh, from SBA outside of, obviously, from the COVID uh, dollars that we talked about earlier. Uh, but there is a grant available through the State Trade Expansion Program, or STEP, uh, again, we're with the government, so we're great on our ac ac uh, acronyms. Uh, SBA uh, just announced the state of Missouri uh, a grant to the state of Missouri for $350,000. And the state of Missouri then will disperse that money to businesses in Missouri who are looking to grow or expand their exporting uh, to do things such as go into trade shows and, and those kind of things. So uh, there are not a lot of grants available, but there are, are Missouri has $350,000 worth of money, a grant money available to help small businesses that want to try to export. And the exporting uh, loan program really works very similar to the 7A program that we went through. Uh, the biggest difference there is that SBA provides a 90% guarantee to the lender on that. Uh, our standard program on a 7A program is either 75 or 85% if it's a small loan. So for the exporting program, we do a 90% guarantee. And again, that helps uh, businesses get loans that maybe couldn't get loans elsewhere. And by providing a higher guarantee to lenders, uh, they're going to be hopefully more willing to make loans to the businesses that are trying to export. And that grows our overall economy and helps all of us. So some key takeaways for folks on some highlights on what we've talked about. The benefits of the SBA program uh, for borrowers you're going to get more reasonable uh, loan terms. Uh, you're going to be able to put in less equity up front, which is going to also mean uh, lower down payments. Uh, we're going to help you um, uh, get an interest rate that's hopefully going to lower your monthly payments uh, and increase your cash flow. And generally going to have maybe longer amortization periods, which will also result in lower payments for, for your business. Again, improving your cash flow. Uh, for lenders to participate, it reduces their risk because they got a, a guarantee from the federal government. Uh, it allows them to expand their volume, uh, make more loans in the community. Uh, there's a Community Reinvestment Act credit that they get because uh, the regulators, uh, governmental agencies are going to require them to make loans in their 
communities, which is what they're required to do. Uh, and then also creates um, uh, liquidity because it's a federally guaranteed loan program. So they're able to sell that as a bond into the market and gives them more dollars to reinvest more loans in the community. And for the community, our programs promote the economic growth, uh, creates jobs, adds tax revenue to our community, uh, and also encourages innovation. Um, we've had a number of businesses that have we've assisted over the years uh, started out really small. Um, you may have heard of a small company called Apple Computers, uh, or maybe FedEx, or Ben & Jerry's Ice Cream. All those folks started out with an SBA, with SBA assistance. And then the slides, if you get the slides, there'll be a place you can do a link to answer a survey if you want to give feedback on this session and how we did and how we can help you. And then uh, here's my contact information. You can reach out to me uh, through our office as well. And we'll be happy to provide answers to more questions, answer questions uh, that may come up that I didn't cover during this uh, in more detail. And again, you'll have this contact information on on uh, the slides that are available. So with that, that's the end of my formal presentation. I would be, I think there may be a couple things in the chat that maybe I want to fire my way and then we'll also open up for any questions or discussion anyone would like to, I can share. Yeah, it looks like there is a question in the chat and I put in a link to our survey for the Small Business and Nonprofit Conference because we'd love to hear what we could do better, what you were pleased with, what you would like to see. Um, so check that out. Um, so the question I see here is, can the 504 loan be used for real estate investment property? That is a very good question. I'm glad you asked that because I didn't mention that during the program. but. Uh, 504 and 7A loan programs are only available for owner operators. So uh, the short answer is no, you cannot use it to buy investment real estate. So if you're gonna buy a building and rent it to somebody else, uh, you cannot use the SBA program. Uh, we are limited uh, by Congress because you're authorized uh, by where our federal agency and Congress only gave us the authorization to do loans for uh, folks who are owner operators. So if you're gonna run a business in that property, yes, if you're going to buy it, you can buy a building. As long as you operate 51% of it, you can get a loan uh, for the entire building. So let's say you're going to buy a, a building and you're going to run your business on the first floor and lease out the second floor. That's permissible. But um, you, have to, you have to operate in at least 51% of the real estate to be eligible. Very good. Are there any other questions? Throw them in the chat. We'd be happy to address them. Or Tom will be happy to address them. I'll be sure. happy to read them. <laughs> well, if there are none, let me just say thank you for joining us for today's presentation. You'll be able to access it again on the St. Louis County Library's YouTube channel shortly.